Hey guys, my name is Pierre from KM SpiderAccessories.com and welcome to the Spider Shop. In this video, we're going to be doing an installation. We're going to be putting handlebar risers on a GS KM Spider. Now, I'm not the king of this department. The king of this department is Steve. Steve? Yep, that's Steve. Steve is going to help me. Steve? Yep, Steve is going to help me do the job on these handlebar risers. All right, you ready? Here we go. <laughs> These are the parts you're going to have when you open up the box. Now, don't be thrown by how little you have. You have a left-hand side, a right-hand side, and just a little bit of hardware, but this is all you need for your project. As you can see, these are not the original uh, handlebars. So what we're going to be, the, the grips uh, I'm talking about. So usually when you have the original, you're going to have one screw right here that you're going to have to remove. Then you're going to be using a flathead screwdriver that you're going to insert this way all the way around. And as you're going around, you're going to be using some glass cleaner or some Windex that you're going to spray in there to help you remove this hand grip. If you have these handlebars, you'll notice, see here, we got a full plate right up front. Usually this would be really thin. I'd be able to take a screwdriver and stick it in there. Now it's not possible to do that. So the challenge we have is to try to remove these handlebars and not having them put them on. We don't know how much glue there is underneath. So we started twisting. We want to save these handlebar grips and we don't want to have to replace them. So for now, we're playing around with it and we're going to find a solution. All right, so right now we're using, <laughs> we're, we're using the Windex technique. You got it, Steve? Yes. <laughs> so as you can see there, we got the Windex technique and actually came right off. We're going to have to remove the, the rubber that's right here. See that there? And in the past, we've been lucky. We've been able to remove this without taking the side panels off. So if it's possible, here we go. We're going to give it a try. As you can see, we're going to be able to remove this. It's going to be easy peasy. But uh, one of the things that Steve mentioned is that we don't usually put this back because we're, you know, we always want to make sure that the wires that we're going to be pulling on have enough space when we put them back. So for all the installations that we've done, now this is up to you, right? It's aesthetic. You can go ahead and try to put it back with the wires when they've been removed and put back kind of thing. If you feel that it's a secure thing and you've got enough room in there, but every bike seems to be different. We've just gone ahead and explained this to the clients and the customers and we don't actually put it back. As I'm just going to ask Steve to pause right there, move this in here. And as you can see here, see it's got to go underneath those wires there. So you, he started on the right hand side, he's working on the left hand side, and then he's just going to pull this underneath the wires towards the left. Now different bikes are going to be different, especially if yours has got a couple of years on it. You know, the slack and the tie, the zip ties or the tie wraps that you're going to have on this may be different. So the first thing you want to do is you want to cramp this all the way left, right? And then you're going to be exposing the hole here. And we're going to be grabbing these wires and we're going to estimate how much loose we have on it. We're going to pull on it and see if we have enough loose to be able to do the job. All right, so as you can see here, Steve is holding that there, and he estimates, we talked about this before, right? Editing, guys. So we talked about it, and with what you see there, you have enough to be able to get that three inches. For this bolt here that we're going to be working on, we're going to be using a 14 millimeter, and as you can see, it's a little bit loose on there, right? But we tried a 916, that's way too loose. This is the 916. And a 13 is way too small, it doesn't work as well. So go ahead and use a 14 millimeter for this bolt right here. So this bolt here, we're going to loosen that up and I'm going to switch my camera around. And we, what we want to do is take this part here and we just want to push it counterclockwise towards this side a little bit. You want to give yourself a little bit more room here. But don't forget, you got some oil in here, so you don't want to unscrew that and leave it unscrewed. So you're going to untighten it just a little bit, enough to move this to about here, and as soon as you're there really, really fast, you're gonna relock that up, okay? You're gonna tighten that up back again because you don't want to lose any oils. Okay. 
we're going to need a little bit of help as you can see here uh yeah this bolt has never moved from here and there's a little i won't say rust but you've got all you know kind of dirt uh, accumulating here and it's really uh hard to untighten so we're going to be using some pl100 if you got wd-40 get a little bit of help in there so we can unscrew this We're going to be removing these uh, mechanism on each side, right? So I want you to take off this screw here and there's another one right underneath. And on both sides you have to do this. You're going to be using a number five millimeter Allen key. No. Once it's open up and you've removed it from the clamp, I want you to put the screws back in so you don't lose anything. Okay. We're going to be removing this here. You're going to need a Torque 30 to do that. If you have a rag not far away, please use it so you don't scratch anything. Once you've made this loose to be able to remove the whole thing at once, you're going to need, need to turn your inner bars all the way left. Don't forget to put the screws back. This is going to be left over. So you guys understand, we're going to need to cut these handlebars, right? So otherwise you're going to have two sets of handlebars. So to be able to cut this, we're going to be using one of these. Now this is a Husky Mark. We picked this up at Home Depot. And this is going to do the job just nicely. All right, so Steve is going to measure exactly where we need to cut. For that, he's going to be using the right-hand side piece. And see, he lines it up right there on the gray and he's marking with a utility knife the width of where he needs to cut. Once you've cut both sides off, it's going to look a little something like this. Go ahead and take the right side. You can just insert it like this. As you can see, it's a flush finish. As you look at this piece, the handlebar that we're going to be putting in, you see this little hole that's there, like a rectangular shape? You want to take this part, if you look this halfway, you want the part where it's closest to the edge, and this is what we're going to be inserting right here. You want to go through a motion of turning and twisting to be able to get it in. I'm just going to put this down here to be able to show you this this hole that we were talking about, this is a female part. You've actually, if, if I'm pointing here with my finger, you might be able to see it. You've got the male part in here. Some of these are actually broken, so it might not be in there. If it's, just, if it's flush all the way around, it might even make things a little easier. But if you've got the, female, uh, the male part in here, you've got to understand that this part will fit in here. So you will need a final adjustment because depending if you've turned this, you know, all the way up, and then your, your you know, your throttle and, and this module here is going to be you know a lot more towards you and, and all that so it's going to be a little bit of adjusting later on if you're having issues turning this because it's really tight in there use one of small a small screwdriver just like this one where you can actually just insert it in there and it's going to give you a little bit more torque to be able to turn the handlebars within that hole here I'm going to ask you to make these untight just a little bit, please. Unscrew them a little bit so it's going to be easier to put the handlebar inside here. Don't forget this little plastic part. You've got to put it back right here. 
and Steve is going to show you a little trick. Go ahead, Steve. So he's going to remove the whole thing and the module that's open here, he's going to insert it inside. And once it's inside, he's going to take the whole thing and put it back. For this part of the fitting, this is going to be trial and error. So as you can see, the modular closes perfectly here and it's inside that little, the male part is inside the female part. But as you're putting these up here, are you on a good angle? Do you feel comfortable that way? You're going to need maybe an extra pair of hands. You're going to have to try it out. If it's not good, here's what you have to do. You have to open her up. You're going to need to pull on it a little bit to have access to that hole here. See that hole? And this is where you're going to put the screwdriver. You're going to move it you know, forward or backwards. And then you're going to reassemble the whole thing and then try it again. And it's a trial and error. So you may have to do this a few times until you get the right fitting. At this point, you want to tighten up the screw that goes here and the one that goes on the bottom right there, you want to start making everything tight so you can give you know, yourself an idea of what it's going to look like and everything is going to hold together. As you open up the module on the left hand side, you're going to need to take the, uh, the backup wire, okay, this wire here, and Steve's going to pull it out. You're going to need to separate that part there, just like that. And that wire is going to need to go in the hole that's right there. Right. Once again, we're going to do on the left hand side what we did on the right hand side as a technique. We're actually going to remove it from here. We're going to assemble the whole thing here and then put it back in one shot. As we're moving things around, we're finding that, you know, it's a little tight. So we're going to go ahead and cut the zip tie that's right here. It's a tight fit, but you can see that now we now have the extra room, the extra length on the wire to be able to get the clutch, this part right next to this part here. So everything is back in, so I won't use the same language as Steve used, but you, you want to get those screws back in as fast as possible. At the start of the video, we talked about this part here where we made this loose and we moved it a little bit like that. We didn't actually do it enough, so as we're doing our installation here, we're noticing that this is going to hit here. So what we have to do is simply we're going to loosen this up again and as we loosen it we're going to push it towards here so that we can get enough room here to put this in without having this touch. So our little mistake is actually going to be a good lesson for you. So because this is loose now, it's not being held on anywhere, it's harder to be able to, you know, untighten this bolt without having everything move. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do our best. It's going to move on us a little bit, but that's why it was important to be able to get it all the way out there, okay? So we're going to do it now, but it's going to be a little bit harder because things are going to move around. So we gave ourselves enough room, all right? By moving, you can see the gap that we have there now. So we're actually able to start putting in the screws here so we're gonna it's tight but not too tight so we're gonna do the screws and once we've got everything settled how we want it we're gonna come and tighten this up here but don't forget about this one okay all right guys we're on the home stretch right now so we're gonna you're gonna need to adjust this and he has his hitting the clutch right now you can see that he's checking just to make sure that everything is good so that that module can actually still move a little bit we didn't make everything too tight so now it's time to do the final adjustments on both sides and just make sure before you tighten everything down that everything is to your liking in the packaging you got four of these little plastic caps now if you got the original and the bars not on these ones but the original and the bars you may want to use one on each side here to give it a nice finish and um, these ones we'll put one on each side right here all right on the inside if you don't want to put it here you'll have two leftovers so you can put it right here but we go ahead and put it on the outside here and once you have the original antibodies we put one here the only way to know if everything is okay let's go do a road test
another install video for a spider shop in canamspideraccessories.com i hope that this was helpful enough that allows you to realize this project uh, i say thank you thank you very much for sharing all the videos and everything that we do please give us a thumbs up if you like what we do subscribe to the youtube channel and leave a comment that really helps build the channel up so once again my name is pierre you've been watching the spider shop canamspideraccessories.com Thanks guys.